Learn English from Quotes. The McKinsey Way. 2020082712. ED. XY. Z. Z. As an organization, McKinsey is extremely good at figuring out how much a team can do over the length of a typical study. The best EDS can balance the competing demands of client and team to a nicety, they tell the client, we're going to do X and Y. We could do Z, but it would kill the team, while telling the team, look, we've already promised the client that we would do Z, so we've got to deliver. They then work the team to its limit while simultaneously making the client feel that he is getting value for money and exceeding his expectations. 80 20th 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 
McSeeites have learned a number of tricks for jump-starting their research. You can use these tricks to find the answers to your business problem too. Critics of McKinsey, and management consulting in general, say that the firm bases its solutions on the most current management fad the favorite tool in its intellectual toolbox. Does every aspect of the problem come under one, and only one, of these issues that is, have you thought of everything? If so, then your issues are collectively exhaustive. Does your particular field have a trade journal? These magazines are always looking for copy from industry insiders, write a good article and you will get your name in front of people who would otherwise never have heard of you. Meet your competitors too. Today's competitor could change jobs and become tomorrow's customer. Make sure he knows you. It all adds up to making sure your name is the one your customers think of when they have a need you can fill. 2. Does your particular field have a trade journal? These magazines are always looking for copy from industry insiders, write a good article and you will get your name in front of people who would otherwise never have heard of you. Meet your competitors too. Today's competitor could change jobs and become tomorrow's customer. Make sure he knows you. It all adds up to making sure your name is the one your customers think of when they have a need you can fill. Don't try to pound them into your framework like square pegs into round holes. Asterisk engineers learn something called the square law of computation. It states that for every component of a system for every additional equation in a problem the amount of computation required to solve the system increases at least as fast as the square of the number of equations. In other words, if the complexity of your problem doubles, the time it takes to solve it quadruples unless you make some simplifications. For example, our solar system contains millions of objects, all having gravitational effects on one another. When analyzing planetary motion, astronomers start by ignoring most of these objects asterisk. Ethan. Engineers learn something called the square law of computation. It states that for every component of a system for every additional equation in a problem the amount of computation required to solve the system increases at least as fast as the square of the number of equations. In other words, if the complexity of a problem doubles, the time it takes to solve it quadruples unless you make some simplifications. For example, our solar system contains millions of objects, all having gravitational effects on one another. When analyzing planetary motion, astronomers start by ignoring most of these objects asterisk. Factions within the client's senior management prevented us from doing our job. Data we asked for arrived late, or in an unusable form or not at all. People we needed to interview refused to speak with us. The members of the client team vigorously pursued their own agendas at the expense of reaching a solution. We spent several uncomfortable months on this study and, in the end, had to make what recommendations we could, declare victory, and get out. Factions within the client's senior management prevented us from doing our job. Data we asked for arrived late, or in an unusable form or not at all. People we needed to interview refused to speak with us. The members of the client team vigorously pursued their own agendas at the expense of reaching a solution. We spent several uncomfortable months on this study and, in the end, had to make what recommendations we could, declare victory, and get out. How do you avoid that trap? The McKinsey way is to take an occasional step back from the continual grind of fact-gathering and analysis and to ask yourself what you have learned over the past week, or two weeks, or whatever. How does the new information fit into your initial hypothesis? If it doesn't, how might it change that hypothesis? Doing these little reality checks now and then could save you from chasing down blind alleys. As a final. 9. How do you avoid that trap? 
the McKinsey way is to take an occasional step back from the continual grind of fact-gathering and analysis and to ask yourself what you have learned over the past week, or two weeks, or whatever. How does the new information fit into your initial hypothesis? If it doesn't, how might it change that hypothesis? Doing these little reality checks now and then could save you from chasing down blind alleys. As a final. I'm not sure that team bonding is all that important. What's important is that a team works together well, and that will come or not over the course of a project. It's also important that individuals feel respected and that they feel that their ideas are respected. Team bonding is not, did you take your team to enough dinner? Did you go out to the movies? Did you go to the circus? Most people, even very hard-working people, want to have a life, to be with their families. I think that's more important than going out to the circus. If all you have is a hammer, then every problem looks like a nail. If you have mountains of complex data that you need to decipher, then you want the two or three best number crunchers that you can find, regardless of whether they can simultaneously walk and chew gum. On the other hand, if you are managing a big reorganization during which many sensitive decisions will have to be made, you would prefer to have someone on your team with good people skills and experience in implementing change. If your boss steps into your office and says, we have a little problem and we want you to head up a team to solve it, then the lesson for you is a bit more complicated. Don't blithely accept the assignment and say, sure, boss. If you do, you could be setting yourself up for a fall. 2 asterisk it. 5 zero. 3 zero. Imagine it's time for that big, end of engagement presentation. You and your team have been up until 2 a.m. putting together your blue books asterisk making sure that every I has been dotted and every T crossed. You're all wearing your best suits and trying to look on the ball. The senior executives of your Fortune 50 client, anxious to hear McKinsey's words of wisdom, are taking their places around the boardroom table on the top floor of the corporate skyscraper. The CEO strides into the room and says, Sorry, folks. I can't stay. We have a crisis and I have to go meet with our lawyers. Then he turns to you and says, why don't you ride down in the elevator with me and tell me what you've found out? The ride will take about 30 seconds. In that time, can you tell the CEO your solution? Can you sell him your solution? That's the elevator test. In another case, a McKinsey team went in to evaluate expansion opportunities for a division of a manufacturing company. After a few weeks of gathering and analyzing data, the team realized that what the division needed was not expansion, it was closure or sell-off. Acme Widgets In the Acme Widgets problem, suppose your team decided that the key drivers were the sales force, the consumer marketing strategy, and production costs. You then came up with a list of actionable, top-line recommendations as your initial hypothesis, we can increase widget sales by changing the way we sell our widgets to retail outlets, improving the way we market our widgets to consumers, reducing the unit cost of our widgets. Let's begin with a closer look at the sales force. It's organized geographically, northeast, mid-Atlantic, southeast, etc., and sell primarily to three types of retail outlets, superstores, department stores, and specialty stores. The team believes that the sales force ought to be organized by customer type that's one issue. Is each one a separate and distinct issue? If so, then your issue list is mutually exclusive. Let your teammates know why they are doing what they're doing. People want to feel that what they are doing is adding value to the client. There are few things more demoralizing than doing something that you and your team leader know is valueless. No one on your team should ever feel, I've just spent two weeks of my life for nothing. Look at the big picture every now and then, take a mental step back from whatever you're doing. 
ask yourself some basic questions, how does what you're doing solve the problem? How does it advance your thinking? Is it the most important thing you could be doing right now? If it's not helping, why are you doing it? Making your boss look good means two things. Firstly, it means doing your job to the best of your ability. Clearly, if you produce high quality work, it will make your boss's job easier. Second, make sure your boss knows everything you know when she needs to know it. Keep the information flowing. Make sure your boss knows where you are, what you are doing, and what problems you may be having. At the same time, don't overload her with information. Think about what your boss needs or wants to know. Use a well-structured email or voicemail to convey the information. McKinsey maintains a vast network of informal contacts with potential clients as well. The firm encourages its partners to participate in extracurricular activities such as sitting on the boards of charities, museums, and cultural organizations. Many members of these boards are executives at current or potential clients. McKinsey consultants also address industry conferences. Occasional meetings with former clients allow partners not only to check up on the effects of past McKinsey projects, but to make sure that the firm maintains some share of mind should new problems arise at the client. McKinsey maintains a vast network of informal contacts with potential clients as well. The firm encourages its partners to participate in extracurricular activities such as sitting on the boards of charities, museums, and cultural organizations. Many members of these boards are executives at current or potential clients. McKinsey consultants also address industry conferences. Occasional meetings with former clients allow partners not only to check up on the effects of past McKinsey projects, but to make sure that the firm maintains some share of mind should new problems arise at the client. MECE MECE MECE, pronounced MECE, stands for Mutually Exclusive, Collectively Exhaustive. One zero stop shop. One zero. Most McKinseyites are generalists. They know a little about a lot of things. As they gain experience and move through the ranks, they may come to know a lot about a lot of things. Even at this point, however, they will still know less about, a, inventory management practices for perishable foodstuffs than the folks who have been running the distribution operations of stop and shop for the last 10 years. Gut instinct might tell those folks the solution to an inventory management problem in 10 seconds, although they still would be wise to check the facts, McKinsey will go to the facts first. It. My experience at the firm, and that of the many McKinsey alumni I interviewed for this book, taught me that IHS produced by teams are much stronger than those produced by individuals. Why? Most of us are poor critics of our own thinking. New word. Feedback.